What's up, movie trivia modern fans? No need for a uh, fancy intro, because as per always, I'm late. Uh, just trying to ke keep up and catch up on all the modern matches that I've missed. Ne this next one up, Janine the Machine versus Eric Zipper, clearly representing the stars who are in desperate need of points at the moment. Uh, unfortunately for me, I, I already know who won. So there. But even if I didn't know, I would still be representing the stars, as per usual, be participating myself. Uh, but, you know, it's singles, so don't expect too, much, too many correct answers out of me. So, uh, yeah, here we go! Hello everyone and welcome back to the movie trivia showdown alongside the incredible Steph Sabra. I am merely Mark Baby Carrots Ellis and Steph. The singles tournament keeps on chugling and maybe the most even matchup we've had. We're had some great matches, but when you talk about Eric Zipper and Janine the Machine, you talk about two competitors who love competing. They love their fan base. Their fans love them even more and they're looking to score major points for their respective factions. I know this is the first singles tournament I've really been a part of throughout the season, and I'm living for it, but these two competitors specifically are really exciting to me. I feel like they're two competitors whose their records don't represent how good they really are. True. Each of the matches yeah. that they've had this season, I've it's been able to see, and they are such such incredible competitors. So to see them go against each other today, I think is going to be really fun for us and the fans at home. Yeah, and this season already, a little bit of connective tissue between the Z-Man and the Machine because Zipper lost a tough match, his only singles match in this season to Jader Paramo. Janine the Machine defeated Jader, but then she lost a tough one to Marisol McKee, but she gave Lady Justice a good ball game. And so either one of them we know is capable of getting hot and going on a run towards the tournament finals. Who is going to emerge from that pack today? How do you see this one shaping up as far as who might have the advantage? Is it going to be swag or is it going to be the stars? I really don't know. It's anyone's game today, but I have to say that I feel like Janine is a competitor that has deserves all the love that she gets and hasn't really had the record that she represents. And it would be so cool to watch a player like her take on this tournament by storm. And I think that she has that fire under her right now to really get that win, especially coming from a really tough loss against Marisol. Yeah, this could come down to that oh-so-precious virtual wheel spin in round number two because we also know about Z-Man. If he gets something that's just a little <laughs> nerdy on that wheel, he could run away with a perfect round number two. So it's going to be an exciting matchup. Before we get to player introductions, we're going to take a look at how we got here right now. Kevin Pollock. And your winner! You played your heart out and you would have beat 99 competitors in the league today. I don't even know what to say to you because you are working so hard. You can't do more. That was one of the best games, if not your best game, I've ever seen you play here. There are so many people watching right now that they've been on this journey with you and you're not done. Your time is here and it's coming and it's so close and it's so tangible. And I hope that you don't forget that. The machine has gotten a full upgrade with the stars. And I'm, not <laughs> stopping. I'm, I'm not stopping. As if you had any doubt the machine was going to be in this tournament. So? Who's up first? You're going up against Eric Zipper, the Z-Man. You know, Zip is a good player. He drafted very high. Drafted him first round by Lady Sin. Sort of similar to yourself, I think, in the sense that a lot of very, very close losses. I was there when it happened. Isn't he an IG player? I mean, I only ask that because... I'm getting too excited over something that's pretty memorable. He's done in singles. You keep saying this crushing defeat against Stacey, but do I look crushed? I don't feel crushed. I'm not crushed. I'm totally oh uncrushed. We so. actually debuted on the same day, so I've, you know, kind of been able to track his his uh, improvement along with my own. I I'm mean, not saying I was the I win, love the feature. But you never I think I that. came up with that fans idea. always underrate me, right? Like, I TKO'd Paul Preston. I almost took at least to some death. Um, I hope they give me the respect that Shepherding. I feel I have earned. Like, I know what that feels like. I know yeah. what 
not that a tough competitor was looks it like. Day and a half. I am coming off two literally big and where figuratively. I dominated and played the best that of was my a career. Day and a half when that Anything happened. can happen. But Zips never even sniffed that kind of pressure. But you know what? I'm sorry, I don't stop. getting way too Keep excited doing over it a because it only fuels me. It only makes me want to prove them wrong I'm more. Sorry. All I have to say to you is this: Congratulations, because you're lucky enough to get the machine on her way up. Better watch out, cause she's a killing machine. That one. A war machine. I mean, I can go on, but. Steph, that's why we love calling matches, right? It's not just about the competitors. It's about the leaders of their respective factions. When you get a Roxy Stryer, you get a Winston Marshall. They're a lot of fun to exchange post-game pleasantries with. But when it comes down to the match itself, these two managers love coaching and they love winning even more. I know. I love that you bring that up because these two are so entertaining to watch but have completely different styles with their players. I love the friendship between Zipper and Winston. I love the history that they have in getting reunited. Everyone loves a good reunion, and to see them this season has been really fun. And then Roxy really, really believes in Janine as she should, but I feel like she gave Janine the confidence that she needs that to be the player that she can be. And we've seen Roxy do that for her competitors time and time again. Have you and Roxy had a chance to meet? I'm not sure if y'all have exchanged i i hand really don't i've seen her from afar she's pretty cute uh but we <laughs> haven't gotten that much face to face time hopefully in the future well she's a big movie star so she might not you <laughs> i've know, heard talk to us little people but uh hopefully she'll at least look in the stuff. camera and then it's kind of like she's looking you in the eye all right folks Wait. we are about to get going here steph you ready to give this match a whirl <laughs> you know it mark then we turn it over to the golden thorax I'm, I'm told humans don't have a thorax the voice of Christian Harloff for introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Introducing first, representing Team Swag with a record of two wins, three losses, and one knockout. He is Eric. The Z-Man Zipper! Hi! Hey guys! Oh, upside down. There we go. <laughs> it is Z-Man focused, at least uh, maybe in mine, not in how he holds his whiteboard. But that's a, we, we can read it either way. We know who you represent and who you love is Team Swag. What has training been like? Because, Eric, now you enter into a situation where you haven't had a whole lot of singles experience this season. You took a tough L in a close match to Jader earlier this year. But now it's tournament time. And as we know, we've seen competitors in the past go on runs deep in tournaments that score their faction points. Team Swag could use some right now. How do you plan on doing that today against Sorry, a very tough machine opponent? Uh, you know, uh, that is exactly what I hope happens, uh, is that I, you know, get another shot at recapturing my singles magic from the first round of the tournament last year. Uh, I feel like people have already started to forget. I haven't yet had a shirt made up that says I TKO'd Paul Preston, but I'm working on it. So, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, hopefully, hopefully it's, it's that again. So it would be I'm the excited. hottest selling item for season nine. Isn't that right, Steph? <laughs> yeah, that, absolutely. I, mean, true. I love fashion. And let me tell you, that would be fashionable, <laughs> Zipper. And I got to say, maybe right. people aren't talking about it because when we bring you up, you're just so lovable. That's the first Aww. adjective that comes to mind when I think about you, but um, you. you make it hard to forget that you also are an incredible competitor. And when you're looking at your competitor today, Janine, how uh, have you prepared to go up against her and what would it mean to take this win? Well, I adore Janine. I think she's an amazing competitor and an amazing person and uh, was actually, I think, the first person in the showdown outside of Winston who I met. She taped her first match the same day I taped my first match. So to me, like, our journeys in the showdown have very much paralleled each other. Uh, and as you mentioned before, we are similarly underrated with records that don't reflect how good we are. So I'm just excited for the match because I think it's going to be... A blast. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's adorable. Y'all are first match buddies, but it's going to be all <laughs> business because you know that you cannot emotionally appeal to the machine once competition starts. Zipper could even his record at 500 with a big W here today. But in order to do that, he's going to have to defeat his opponents representing the stars with a record. Five wins, seven losses and three knockouts. 
She is Janine the, the Machine. And there is Janine the Machine, right arm, the one that has written down so many correct answers over the seasons. Janine, it's tournament time once again. How does your mindset change from a regular run-of-the-mill singles match, which I know you take very seriously, into a tournament setting when, like I asked Zipper, you could get hot and go on a deep run? I mean, I'm always putting in a lot of hard work, but uh, I do get a little bit more intense especially coming off two big matches for me uh, where I kind of put myself on the map for people who maybe uh, didn't see what I could do. So definitely bringing a lot more fire this time and uh, all the heat. Janine, <laughs> I feel like you're the weekend. You just come out with bangers, but you haven't yet won an <laughs> Academy <gentlemen>. Award. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious to know what the preparation and mindset shift has been for this match today and what the conversation with you and Roxy looked like before we began. Um, really just kind of taking a look at Zip, like you said, we do kind of have a similar history, but he hasn't really been through what I've been through. Uh, so we kind of take stuff like that into account, really just working with the stars. They've been amazing, kind of putting a lot of energy into uh, getting me ready for this match. Uh, just uh, don't want to give away too many study secrets. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, really kind of just studying our competitor and going from there. Yeah, I, I do have a question, but just because your manager has been a very busy performer of late, is it still business as usual when it comes to training and stuff like that? Have, have people stepped into surrogates or has Roxy been there like we always know her to be? Yes, Roxy's always a huge support when she was away and busy. She was always checking in and making sure, you know, I had what I needed, that I was still in a good headspace. Uh, she definitely uh, tried to do the best she could with, you know, her busy schedule to make sure she was a big support to us still. And the stars always 100% in my corner and always checking in to see what I need uh, when I have a match coming up. So uh, we are a solid family and uh, Roxy is the leader of that family. So it, it means a lot. Two prepared competitors ready for tournament action. Let's get them face to face. Hi, Janine. <laughs> hey, Zip. Hi. It's good to see you. Two competitors just having a little bit of friendly fun before we actually get to the match. And I can adjudicate Janine's words that it is both Roxy Stryer and Winston Marshall, two of the hardest working people I know. They love naps. I get to take them. And with that, we now move on to the rules of round number one. Eight questions from eight different corners of movie trivia. Schmodown know-how will emerge to the field of competition. As soon as you hear a question, write down your best attempt at an answer. Take a shot, see what happens. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. Just make sure you get it written down in full within our 15-second time limit. Again, each question worth one point. Throughout the match, you have three usages of the JTE rule, which is your repeat. Use a JT rule. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds to get that correct answer. You also each have one challenge that may be utilized at any point throughout the three-round match. We'll bring in managers. We'll deliver it to our heart's content. And it will ultimately be your manager that confirms and ratifies if said challenge is taking place. So we'll start with you. Janine the Machine, are you ready to go here? Let's do this. And Eric Zipper. Z-Man, you feeling good? Yeah, let's go. Then let's get, get ready, ready to, to show down. down. Administering question number one. Ladies first, Steph, at your ready. What category are they looking at? We are in the category of mystery. What unconventional 2001 mystery thriller featuring Guy Pierce has characters named Leonard Shelby, Sandy Jenkins, and Teddy Gamble? I'll tell you, it's no mystery how great Steph's a bras, but folks, she's the one person that actually got me to look at Twilight through a different lens on Rotten Tomatoes is wrong. Unbelievable. I'm going to say this right here now. Four, I despise three. that movie, you blew my mind people too. love it. So one. Pens down. Let's that. go to you first, Janine. What do you have? Memento. Memento. Memento is correct. And Eric Zipper. Memento. Not so to be Memento confused with Mentos. Tea? Freshness tastes better. Your next question. Know. It's in the category of crime like movies. movies. And the query. Which actor appeared in the crime films Murder in the First, Wild Things, and Mystic River? But you yeah, left off of question, Team Charlie. I, <laughs> I was Team Bella's like dad. <laughs> I, 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 I want to be like Team Jacob so, so bad. He imprinted. Um, Four, <laughs> three, 
two. He was painted into a corner. One. Pens down. Let's go to you first. Z-Man, did you have it? Kevin Bacon. He's got a momentary lead. Janine? Kevin Bacon. And just like that, back to a tied ball game. Two to two. We move to question number three in the category of action adventure. Ty Sheridan plays the lead role of a character who goes by Parzival when inside a digital world known as the Oasis in what 2018 sci-fi action adventure film? Oops. I think I would definitely rather be a vampire because they age fantastic. And I don't know about the wolves. Like, do they need prednisone when they get like older? And think about the smell that you drag in everywhere. Okay, another hot take. Three. Well, that happens to me I anyway, too. I love this movie. One. <laughs> Pens down, movie, and it's Janine. Uh, ready Player One? Ready Player One. Ready Player One is correct. I love that movie. Ready Player One. And I don't care They're in tournament see. shape so far they today, are. Steph. The focus is real. All right, your next question is in the world of famous actors and actresses, where the answer could be Robert Pattinson or Taylor Lautner. Here it is. Which actor is in the following films? Bad Times at the El Royale, Only the Brave, and The Mirror Has Two Faces. Good films here. I love how focused these two competitors are right now. Typing me up, Mark. <laughs> I can't yeah, imagine I'm what their great. managers are doing right now. <laughs> Four. Three, two, one. Getting that well, scribbling in under the gun is Z Man. What do you I was have? I'm gonna say I went with John Hamm. Robert Pattinson or Taylor John Hamm is incorrect. How about Janine? Them, so I just Jeff Bridges. I just went with Jeff Bridges Robert is correct, and with yeah. that, the first lead because of the ball the game has been taken. Janine still perfect. Halfway through round one, Z Man trails her by only a point. Then we move to question number five in the category of animated. Kelly Marie Tran and Daniel Day Kim lent their voices to what Disney film set in the mystical land of Kumandra? Kumandra, yeah. Right, I got an animated question for you because I know you keep up with this stuff. That uh, Marvel What If, any good? It's the one that I haven't seen yet and everyone yeah. is telling me I got to. Four, Sorry, I rely I on you for know. this. Three, I know. two. Get on it, coach. One, That's a pen long down title, and we dude. go to Janine. Did you have it? Raya, Raya the, last, the dragon? last Dragon. Raya the Last Dragon is correct. How about Z-Man? I believe it's Raya and the Last Dragon. We will accept either okay. answer, and it is correct for both accounts. And so it is one, two, one point apiece for that one. And so we move on to the next category, which is we see a wait in the private chat. Let's bring in Winston oh. Marshall just to be safe. I'm just, I'm just double checking. I mean, it's not like a random article. It's not Raya the Last Dragon, as in Raya is the last. It's Raya and the Last Dragon. Raya with the final dragon. Those are Benefit two completely different double. meanings. Okay, that's. But do you, do you want to officially issue a challenge? Do you want to talk it over with your competitor real quick? I mean, Zip, it is, isn't it Raya and the Last Dragon? It is, and it does change the meaning. Uh, I, I'm down with either, but if you if you say I, we I, I, it, I, I would say we go for it because this is this puts on the line potentially a, a perfect round. So yeah, I would like okay. to check. Then that. okay, then uh, Roxy, I'm going to give you and Janine a little bit of time to counter with an argument before Steph and I make the ruling. There's no Raya the Last Dragon movie, so there's nothing to confuse it with. Yeah. So for benefit of the I mean, doubt, which is and no... does buts ifs, which we've seen all I mean, season long, but then we side with title. the person who is getting the benefit of the doubt, which would here be Janine, which she couldn't be confusing this with another movie because there is no Raya the Last Dragon. Yeah. Okay. Fair arguments both ways. We will be right back with, with our challenge rule. And or just calling the Last Dragon in it. It would have been an acceptable challenge, but I mean, I see we are back and we have the combination as well as the there. challenge That's ruling. Just... And it was an interesting conversation between all of the judges. But we did arrive at a consensus that while Raya and the Last Dragon and Raya the Last Dragon might not technically be the same movie. And it does make a big difference with that. And it also is Raya the Last Dragon. We can presume that it was the knowledge displayed more than enough to award Janine the Machine the point on getting the correct answer. And so the challenge is overruled. Janine does get the point. All right, so there we are. And it's gonna be a tough one now, but it is the category of comedies. 
Why? It's a good icebreaker. <laughs> you know, really I didn't get those glasses. <laughs> and your question. What happened? Which actor plays Joe Bowers, who is selected to take part in a secret military experiment to put him in hibernation for a year, along with a woman named Rita in the film Idiocracy? Oh, um. And I may be an idiot, but. I love that Steph, movie. Did you just put on spectacles? Yeah, thanks for noticing, Mark. I love when men notice notice fashion changes. I I got more serious after the challenge. I had to read better. Well, I, I don't know what the rules are now. As a man with glasses, hey, myself, Eric, did you I have notice it? when people put these things on? Luke Wilson. Oh yeah. Luke Wilson is correct. How about Janine? Didn't have it. Okay, so she survived Ooh, through five with a perfect the, round with the challenge rolling, but now she does miss a question like finally in round number one. So no perfect rounds here. Steph, yes, you didn't question six. All. Now we are tied up in the category of biopics. Biopics. Which actor played real life individuals in the films Lean on Me and Invictus? For the record, actor. you do um, look great in the glasses. Oh, I have and no even idea. better, but, and I hope he's not watching this, than Christian Harlock does. Oh, Idiocracy yeah. is kind of yeah, a biopic. I'll, say it. I'll take it. On our Four, current three, future. Two. No? One, but not quite as well as Eric Zipper yet. Uh, Janine, you're up first. Morgan Freeman. She gets back on the correct answering train with that one. How about Z-Man? Morgan Freeman. Is Morgan correct. And Freeman. so here is where we stand. It is a tied ball game. And it is six to six. So now we move on Execute to your final question in round number one. And it's in the category of the Oscars. The Academy Awards that sometimes... Even has a host. Your question for a point. <laughs> this 2015 biopic written by Aaron Sorkin and directed by Danny Boyle received two Oscar nominations in the categories of Best Actor and Best Supporting Actress. I do agree. Zipper probably has the win on the glasses. Thank you. But I needed to read better. So. <laughs> Your glasses, not just a uh, fashion accessory. All right. Four. It's dual. Three. Two, one, pens down, and we go to the very lovely, respectable Mr. Z. Steve Jobs. He oh, got it yeah. for a point, and Janine. Not the one Steve I was thinking it. of. And, you know, Steph, in one of the more impressive turnarounds from having a challenge rule against them, I can recall Z Man ends up going perfect since the challenge ruling that went against him, and he now has the lead over Janine. It is seven to six. As we go into round number two, the wheel round, the wheel of fate, doom, and justice. Here's how it works. It is the virtual wheel with the fans just love. They're crazy about it. Each competitor gets a spin at it. Once they settle on a particular realm, four questions will emerge from said genre. Each question is worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. It can really stem the tide of the match. So if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We give you four options, one of which... I'm told is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question does recede to one. JTE rules and challenges still in effect. So Zip, you have survived round number one. You come out of it with the lead by one point. So you have the option. Do you want to spin first or defer to your opponent? I think I'm going to defer and let Janine go. He's going to defer like a gentleman. And so we drop out Zip and bring in Janine's manager, Roxy Stride. Janine, I think that because Winston and Zipper have been watching all season long, they know very well that they called that challenge knowing they would lose it to try and throw you. Because that's Evidence what I think they were attempting to do. Based on every single thing that we've seen so far, every and has gotten overturned. So what we're not going to let it do is throw us. We won the challenge because, of course, we did. Those are That's in the rule book. And now we're here, and I think that we have to refocus. You've got this. That was a really strong round one. And just because he took a one-point lead, we know very well that means absolutely nothing in the Schmodown. So let's spin this wheel. We have an absolute game plan and strategy going into this. I'm so proud of you to this point. And let's refocus into this game and figure out what we're going to do with this wheel right now. Okay, let's do this. And there is the wheel. And Janine... Gives it a spin with her bionic mind. <laughs> bionic mind. Here it goes. 
Round and round it goes, DreamWorks. and it is DreamWorks Animation. So, Janine, you have 60 seconds to once? decide alongside your She's manager. You want to keep that slice, or would you like to spin again? Talk to me about what you're thinking. Uh, yeah, I know Super we talked about this. Um, I mean, I feel pretty okay with everything, so I feel comfortable spinning again. I think that, know that we've had one animation question so far, you've hit it. You're very solid in this category, but there are things that we would prefer. So if we end up here, it's totally fine. Well, let's spin the wheel again and see what we end up with. Also, I don't trust you, Zipper. Anybody who smiles when they're losing or winning is not to be trusted, especially not in a Hulk shirt. So, so when are, <laughs> what about when they're announcing? Is that okay? Is, you want to smile. <laughs> mm, jury's still out. All right, okay. Paul Thomas Anderson is the way the slice goes. So it's four questions in that category. All right, so Zipper is back, and his opponent, Janine, spun first, courtesy of him, and she now has Paul Thomas Anderson movies administered by Steph Sabra. Two points. Remember, multiple choice is available, Janine. Okay. All right, Janine, for your first question in round number two, in the category of Paul Thomas Anderson, which Paul Thomas Anderson film has the line, I am an oil man? There will be blood. That is correct for two points as we move to your oh, second question in round two. I have no idea if it's even in that movie. I just Which Paul it. Thomas Anderson film features supporting performances from Benicio Del Toro, Maya Rudolph, and Martin Short? I'm going to go to multiple choice. All right. Is it A, Inherent Vice? B, Phantom Thread, C, The Master, or D, Punch Drunk Vice? Punch, punch Drunk Love. Punch drunk what do you mean? Love. Love? <laughs> um, A, yeah. Inherent Vice. <laughs> that is correct for two, for one point for Janine. Punch Drunk Love was also correct to Zip for things. Sorry. For correction. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, can we give Zip some point? It was, it was yeah. written differently, so it's not on staff at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just I'm like Anchorman. You're just reading what's in front of me, man. <laughs> I have stubby fingers, and I'm not the best typist. My bad. <laughs> we move to Janine's third question in round number two. Who plays Val Dodd, the son of Philip Seymour Hoffman's character in The Master? I'll go to multiple choice. A, Jesse Plemons, B, Ben Foster, C, Josh Gad, or D, Mark Webber? B. That is incorrect. Now I'll re-ask the question as, long, uh, as well as the multiple choice for a zipper. Who plays Val Dodd, the son of Philip Seymour Hoffman's character in The Master? A, Jesse Plemons, B, Ben Foster, C, Josh Gad, or D, Mark Webber? Uh, that would be uh, A, Jesse Plemons. Jesse Plemons is correct for a big one point steal for Zipper as we move to Janine's fourth and final question in round two. How many times has Paul Thomas Anderson been nominated for a Best Director Oscar? Twice. That is correct for two points. Those wow. being There Will Be Blood and Phantom Thread. Whoo, that was, I, I don't know if that was a guess, but she's, she played it cool, but what a big score on that last question, getting two big points after Zipper had just stolen the previous one. So it's 11 to eight in favor of the machine, but we're gonna let her rest in the green room for a little bit and bring in Zip's manager for his round two, Winston Marshall. There is the manager of swag looking a little sporting himself, 60 seconds, sir. Okay, sorry, I had to go glasses. get my uh, rebuttal glasses real quick since uh, apparently I'm just frames. blowing smoke. Should I, should I go get my other frames? I mean, no, you're okay. You're okay. You're okay. I okay. took some notes. 
Uh, first of all, uh, Roxy said that the challenge was frivolous. No, as I made in said argument, it is a completely different movie. Raya is not the last dragon. And so calling that out just means that I'm calling out the fact that, sure, she knew the movie existed, but did she see the movie? Who knows? Uh, second of all, <laughs> Roxy said that there was uh, one point makes no difference. Hmm. Well, you just stole for a point, which is now two points. So that's also interesting too. Uh, that's uh, about all on my points there that I wanted to make. Uh, other than that, Eric, I just want to say, my buddy, my guy, my friend, Thanks, you were the world's finest for a reason, and I am so proud to be playing with you yet again. So Dude, how are you feeling, my man? We are the world's finest. It's it's together that this that this works so well, and uh, I'm feeling good. Although you know, it's typically when I feel like I have the lead or I'm doing well that I end up losing. So I'm we're not trying to... we're not thinking about that because there's a couple things I will acknowledge. Four, Janine's three. You know what? Let's spin. We know what we're gonna do with the wheels, so I will impart some advice in that time frame. Though. <laughs> there you go. You do get 60 seconds to decide unless you spin the slice that shall not be named. Let's see what it lands on here. And that is going to be, it's a decade, kids, and it is the 1990s. And I did that without the need of glasses. Thank you, LASIK. 60 seconds to decide. Slight flex. Okay. So we, we know what we want to do unless you've changed your mind. I was just going to say, just know with Janine, being that who she is, she is the comeback queen, all right? She did it in the Black Cinema exhibition. She's done it in a number of other matches, so you got to stay on your P's and Q's. So do you want to stick with what we originally planned for this? Or you want to you wanna do something else? I think I do. I think I do want to stick with what we planned. Uh, Great. And, and spin again. Great, let's do it. All right, always a little bit of a risk. Steph spinning again, but Janine did it. She got a real category, not sliced it. We're not allowed to say out loud, but there oh, it my. is. Oh, Once no. All right. There's only yeah, so many times you can challenge the baby. Opponent's choice reared its I mean, ugly head. It's the only the slice gets more face time like. than Meryl Streep. So we are going to drop eyes. out, <laughs> zip and tag, and bring back the stars. All right, you have a decision to make in 60 seconds to do so, Janine and Roxy. He's checking my notes, and I do agree with Winston on the fact that you are, in fact, the comeback queen! Queen! Yes. All right, uh, talk to me about what you're thinking here. Based on the fact that he just spun off of 90s, I know that that was on our, our radar, but yeah. something else I mean, that we, I think, prefer, but how are you feeling, Janine? Um, you know, it seems like a kind of a modern guy, so... Let's give him a taste of some classics. Oh, you think it's time to throw it back? Yeah. 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 I'm sure I agree with you. Yes to that one, Janine. Let's go. This is what we need. Don't forget to pay attention for those steals. Uh, I'm pretty sure you have a podcast that means that you probably are going to annihilate this, so he should be shaking in his boots. Let's go with classics. All right, we are back. And Eric, I'm not sure if you got word yet to your faction. Classics is the category that Janine so kindly chose for you. Four questions are now facing you in that category. Each one worth two points. Unless you need multiple choice, just let us know. I will be asking the questions, and here we go. What 1960s musical is known for the line, please, sir, I want some more? Oliver Twist. Four. Incorrect. So for a two-point steal, Janine, I'm going to re-ask the question. What 1960s musical is known for the line, please, sir, I want some more? I believe it's just Oliver. It is just Oliver for two ah. points, and that is a big, big steal that pulls Janine to within one of Zipper's lead. It is 11 to 10, so we go back to Zip for his second question, the category of classics. And it is, who starred as Benjamin Braddock in The Graduate? Uh, that would be Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman is correct for two points. And Zip gets those two right back. And now we move on to your third question. This is your penultimate query in the category of classics. And it is, who starred in the 1960s westerns Hang them high and paint your wagon. I'm going to go multiple on this one. Multiple choice, your four options for a point. Is it A, Clint Eastwood, B, Charles Bronson, C, Lee Marvin, or D, James Coburn? 
James Coburn. Is incorrect. And so for another steal opportunity, Janine, we go back to you. The question, who starred in the 1960s Westerns, Hang 'em High and Paint Your Wagon, your multiple choice options? Is it A, Clint Eastwood, B, Charles Bronson, C, Lee Marvin, or D, James Coburn? Clint Eastwood? Clint Eastwood is correct. And that is another steal. Zipper, one last chance to score points in round number two with his final question in the category of classics. And it is. Basil Rathbone plays what famous character in 1939's The Hound of the Baskervilles? Sherlock Holmes. It's a big, big answer there. Closing out round number two, 14 to 10 was the score. Zipper just halved the lead of Janine the Machine. It is now 14 to 12, a two point advantage for Janine as we head into round number three. Steph, this is the matchup that we thought we were gonna see. Completely, just switching every single round. Things are, look differently now. Round three, Janine has the lead, but round two, she was behind. So who knows what's gonna happen now? Interesting mix of offense and defense here in this matchup so far. And now we are into round number three. This is the round that will determine the match unless we go to sudden death overtime, which I pray and I'm being told we are prepared for. So round number three works as thus. Yeah, I mean, we need some help from each competitor to get those questions you're going to be answering. You just need to give us a series of numbers. We need three numbers from each of you. You may not pick the same numerals as your opponent as each integer corresponds to a unique category of schmodown mystery. Your first question is worth two points. Your next question is worth three points. Your final question is worth five big points. Points. There's no penalty for missing a question, and there is no stealing in round number three. So before we give you a little meeting with your manager, we do need those numbers. Janine, you're trailing after round one. You find yourself leading by two going into round number three, so you have the luxury of giving us your three lucky numbers first. From one to 20, what feels fortunate? Three, six, and nine. Easy six, enough yeah. for me, and Z-Man. Let's do one, two, and five. That's arguably just as easy. Thank you both. And we're going <laughs> to drop out Z-Man and bring back Janine's manager, Roxy. Three, six, nine, damn you fine every single time. Uh, he, so many things. If it looks like a comeback queen and it sounds like a comeback queen, then let's just call it a comeback queen. I want you in this next round to have no fear Don't going into a, this. Don't call it a comeback. No fear. She's because what's scary she's about you that, is you've done it all. Goes, and uh, you have nothing to lose because you have been everywhere in this game. And it's our journey to the belt, to the end of this tournament. And right now, my money is on you. My money is always on you. But you just did in round two exactly what we knew you could do. And you came back. You took every steal that you needed to take. We gave him exactly what he we knew he was weak in because you have studied your butt off. You know him. You know your stuff. So no fear going into this. Answer every single question that you know. The sex with numbers that I've seen. Uh, and I'm so proud of you up to this point. And I know I'm going to be pr proud of you at the end of this match as well, Janine. You've Thank got you, this. Rex. Yep, got you've this. got this. Let's go. Okay, just finishing a couple notes. All right, here we go. Uh, first of all, uh, I think it's very rude for Roxy to point out that Janine is fine and not Steph and Mark Ellis. They are quite gorgeous as well. Go ahead and cross that one off. Uh, second of all, uh, just remember, because we started off with the lead, we actually had the room for mistakes she didn't, and that actually worked in our favor. So there you go. I'm going to get rid of that point right there. Uh, another thing, she said that she did her comeback queen power as well. Like a nitrous in Fast and the Furious, she used her superpower early. Can cross that one off. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's all going to come down to the five, so just do what you got to do, brother. No worries about that, please, because two points really doesn't mean a thing once you get to round three. Can cross that off. Uh, yeah. Let's see. We're playing with house money. We've talked about that before. Just do what you got to do. Uh, and finally, then the most important one by far, and I'm going to take my glasses off for this because I know we only have a couple seconds. You got your, uh, what, your JTEs. We've already used our challenge. Don't worry about that. We have the power of friendship. All right, they just met. They just became cohorts like a couple months ago. I've known you for years, so do your ish. All right. He, I wonder if he actually wrote all thank those you. down. Yeah, yeah, you can see all the erasure marks, like right there. You can see there was like the, the line by line. Oh, all right, down. sir. You've, you've been heard. All right, so the competitors are back set after two rousing speeches. <laughs> ushering their competitors on to victory courtesy of Roxy Stryer and Winston Marshall. But now it is back 
to competition. Eric Zipper, Z-Man, is going to be fielding questions asked by Steph Sabra. He currently trails by two. Steph, he selected category number one for his two-pointer. What's he looking at? We are looking at Westerns. Category Western. one. Okay. All right. All right. For your two-point question in round number three. Who received a Best Supporting Actor nomination for his role as the treacherous John Fitzgerald in the film The Revenant? That would be... Tom Hardy? Easily the best part of the movie, Tom Hardy. Hot take with a correct answer there. It is tied at 14 apiece. finally! We'll let the internet deal with that comment, but now it is... Over to Janine the Machine. Janine, we're now tied, I mean, I so a TKO is off the, the table, bear. but a victory still really well within your grasp. Movie. You can start I mean, that, with a two-pointer. You selected number three, and that's going to correspond to the category of didn't, didn't the, Matthew, the 1990s. In, uh, um, and Hall? your question. Who plays Hitman Jules in the film Pulp Fiction? Samuel L. Jackson. That is correct. And just mm. like that, two of the best I supporting per performances we've seen in the last 40 years. And now we go back to Z-Man for his three-pointer. Steph, he selected category two. So what's he looking at now? The Z-Man is looking at action and adventure. I like both those things. <laughs> Me too. And for your three-point question... Jason Statham plays a hitman named Arthur Bishop in what 2011 action thriller remake from director Simon West? Wait, a remake? You lost me in remake. Hold on. Oh. Ouch. Five. Four. Let me get a repeat, two. please. That's his first one. He has two remaining. Jason Statham plays a hitman named Arthur Bishop in what 2011 action thriller remake from director Simon West? Five, four, three, two. Spencer? That is incorrect. The answer we were looking for is the mechanic. Oh, yeah. yeah. The mechanic. Totally forgot all right. Yeah. So now, all of a sudden, well, stuff. we're at that That's moment where me. Zipper is faced with a five-pointer. He's huh. got a hit. If he gets it, he's going to force Janine to answer at least one more question. If he misses, Janine the Machine will advance in the tournament and face the winner of the match between Mike Kalinowski and Paul Walter Hauser. He selected number five for his five-pointer, coincidentally. What category did he get? Zipper has landed on the category of black cinema for your five-point okay. question. Uh, that's an interesting one. Who made their directorial debut with the 1997 film Eve's Bayou? How many repeats do I have? Two. Two. Five. Dos. Four. Three. Let me get a repeat. Okay. Who made their directorial debut with the 1997 film Eve's Bayou? Oh. Casey Lemons? That is correct for five points. A big oh, pull for wow. Zipper there. Wow, what a pull by Zipper. I don't know if that JTE will just bought him the three extra seconds he needed, but he seemed pretty prepared for it, Steph. And so now it is a three-point lead for Zipper. And now Janine, the machine, trails by three. She can just get a three-pointer and maybe we move to sudden death, but she could also hit a three and secure sudden death, but then also has that five remaining for the win. So Janine, it is back to you for your three-pointer. You selected the category of spy movies with your number six and your three-pointer. This could tie the match against Zipper. 
And it is. Donald Moffat plays corrupt United States President Bennett in what 1990s spy action thriller directed by Philip Noyce? Let off some steam, Bennett. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Noyce. Noyce. Five, four, three. Repeat two. the question. All right, that's your first usage of a JTO. We have two remaining. The category is spy movies. And the question, Donald Moffat plays corrupt United States President Bennett in what 1990s spy action thriller directed by Philip Noyce? Five, four, three. I don't know if the Manchurian candidate. Looking for clear and present danger. Clear and present danger. And it is still a three-point ball game in favor of Z-Man. And it all comes down to this. No chance for sudden death anymore, kids. It is a five-pointer to Janine the Machine. If she hits it, she advances in the singles tournament. If she misses it, Z-Man, Eric Zipper, is going to advance. And this is the kind of competition that Schmodown fans crave in a tournament setting. Janine, you selected category nine. Nine. For your five pointer. Not sure how sexy the number is on its own, but in that sequence, it is going to correspond to the category of musicals. Musicalis. And your question for five points and the win. You'll find the song One Song Glory. In what 2005 film adaptation of a Broadway hit featuring Rosario Dawson and Jesse L. Martin? Repeat the Five, question. Four. You still have one JT or remaining. The category is musicals in the question. You'll find the song One Song Glory. In what 2005 film adaptation of a Broadway hit featuring Rosario Dawson and Jesse L. Martin? So many variables in this question. Rent. And your oh, winner, yeah. Janine the Machine. It is Rent. That is the correct answer. 21 to 19 is your final score. Janine, Roxy, the stars advance in the tournament to play the winner of Mike Kownowski and Paul Walter Hauser. What an incredible pull. What an incredible match played by both the machine and Z-Man. We'll let the stars enjoy in the green room for a sec. I mean, this is the stuff that people love the Schmodown for. It's a tournament setting. It's tense. You can cut it with a knife. And it all came down to the last five pointer. And Janine, I know she knows a little something about musicals. I just didn't know that her knowledge was that deep and impressive pull. Oh my gosh. I mean, from start to finish, I feel like I haven't been breathing properly. That was such a tense match. And something about Janine makes so many people in this community cry. <laughs> she just gets the emotions running. And something about Zipper just makes you just so happy that someone like him is a part of this community because they are both such excellent competitors and just down to the wire they both did what they needed to do and that was the crazy part just one had to come out on top and today it was Janine yeah you know I, I have trouble remembering a match that felt that with that, that there was that much firepower involved where they were just getting correct answers left and right but then it would just immediately turn into a defensive struggle and you're just kind of feeling each other out hoping to not give away another steal but then they both come back and they hit Tough five pointers. Eve's Bayou and Rent are your two movies that were the five pointers. Great movies. Y'all should check them out. And wow, what a victory for Janine the Machine. And right now, we are going to hear from the Machine, her manager, Roxy Stryer of the Stars, with our own Jen Sturger right now. Jen, they're advancing in the tournament, and you got to think they're feeling pretty good about it. <laughs> Janine, I mean, we've said this so many times in post interviews. Um, you're just one of those players that's record does not indicate the level of competitor that you are. And 
I would love nothing more. I know I'm supposed to remain unbiased, but I think I speak for so many Schmodown faithful. I would love nothing more for this to be an amazing run for you in this singles tournament because I feel like it's your time. Yes, that'd be super exciting. Um, <laughs> I, I'm like, I this is my first time making it to the next round of a tournament in singles. So super yes. just really excited <laughs> and against a competitor like eric zipper because let's face it you're not you weren't playing a slouch that was one of those matches that honestly i'm so sweaty i'm gonna have to okay, block I'm myself in places it. i didn't know i could sweat um <laughs> but what at what point at any point during the match were you a little were you a little scared that round three in particular for me at least just because i know sometimes that that's where you struggle um do you think that you got a little nervous after you missed that three-pointer. I mean, a little bit because I, I had that five with Marisol in my head, perfect game up to that five. Um, so it could have been anything. I was I was waiting for another Scott Glenn, but uh, you know, I was preparing for the worst, hoping for the best, just you know, tried to stay confident. I think in my promo I did, I come for zipper a little bit, but he is no slouch. He's definitely an amazing competitor, definitely an underrated competitor. Um, so I knew I had my- And just one of those competitors that you have an immense amount of respect for. You guys have both yes. been in the league for a while. You both just have that veteran respect. So I can imagine, I can just imagine the nerves coming into this match, knowing what he's capable of. Yes, definitely. And like you said, we were first day match buddies. We, uh, you know, debut on the same day. Uh, so I definitely have a lot of respect for him. And uh, he played awesome today. So, Roxy, I mean, this is the quietest I've seen you. But also just I feel like I feel like you're the one that's holding back so much emotion right now in tears. It's a fantastic red lip, by the way. Thank um, you, but I, I have to say, like, you must be so incredibly proud of this woman because you've seen oh her God. scrap for every point she's ever earned since she's been a member of the stars. It's yeah. ridiculous. Like I, this is even, even the fact that the, the ants one song glory, like that's Janine. Janine I know one song glory. Like this is, <laughs> I, I've been saying it this whole time that this is her season. And like, even though I said that early on, she's just keeps getting this close, this close, this close. So to hear and your winner and like have her, the person with the most beautiful voice, the person who deserves us more than anybody else and have it be that. Uh, I'm just so proud, I'm so impressed. She never gives up, she never stops fighting. No matter if she's down or that is coming off of L's or whatever's happened on the faction or anything. Like she just never ever quits. And I think, I don't think there's anybody else in the Schmodown that I can say that about. She just really, truly, no matter what, not for a single day, never storms off, never backs down, never has a 30 second period where she's like, I don't want this the whole time. She's ne she never ever Walk quits. In. And that means something and that's going to work. And so I'm just so proud of her. And we got to yeah. talk about that round two. We got to talk about that opponent's choice. Was that a, was there a game plan coming into this match for you two? <laughs> you know, where you were just like, that's what we're going with. Yeah, I mean, I think we definitely did our research on Zipper. Um, the wheel had a lot of broad stuff on there. Um, so we did have that discussion. And I do host a Classic Films podcast. So, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you were like this is much my round two as it is his round two you know i'm picking for me <laughs> exactly so i thought there would be a good shot to get some steals maybe and you know i don't think he seemed like a guy who really was into classic movies so you know we took that chance but to, for, for people out there who think that we just won this because we got opponent's choice, because that's always conversations after the times mm -hmm. that opponent's choice end up on there. What I will say is I think they were probably as stoked that we landed on what we landed on as we were that they landed on what they landed on. Uh, because I, I just have a feeling that that might be one of his strengths. And with his steals, we can see that that's something they were excited for too. So yeah. I, I'm really... I'm happy that we got opponent's choice, but all, very often you get opponent's choice and you still end up not winning because with competitors like Zipper, who's really freaking good, you just never know. You don't know what he's been studying, what he's been working on. And Zipper is somebody who continues to improve every single game the same way that Janine does. So I'm really impressed by his game today as well. But I, I, I hope that the conversation out there is not about opponent's choice because 
I think that that's just the way the wheel goes sometimes, and it could have not gone in our favor. So, like, next round, I know this is the first time for you, Janine, um, <laughs> but you're not done here yet. Uh, and believe me, when I say you're not done here, I mean you've got your work cut out for you. You're obviously going to be facing either Mike Kalinowski or Paul Walter Hauser, neither of which is a slouch. And obviously, you and Mike have your history, so oh, this yeah. could get really, oh, really yeah. interesting really fast. Uh, what are you going to do to prepare for this match? Uh, do my research again. Um, you know, this would be Mike Machine 3 if this happened. I know. <laughs> well, I think I know him pretty well at this point. Um, but yeah, definitely just doing the research on these guys. They are tough competitors, so just putting in the work, the stars will have my back, Roxy will have my back, and we'll get it done, so. <laughs> Does this mean you'll be bringing bread just in case? <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps. I'll get in my some bread. <laughs> Well, oh congratulations. Oh congratulations oh today again, Janine. Um, always a pleasure to see you in the first interview, just because I I know we all we all say it. I feel like so many people in this league just root for your success because we know what you're capable of, and today you proved every ounce of that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jen. Take care, guys. Best of luck. All right, a very focused but not emotional Janine the Machine because, Steph, she's looking at greener pastures, that being continuing to advance in the tournament. Going to be a very interesting matchup regardless of who comes out of that kalinowski walter Hauser match to face Janine the Machine. But what a performance she put on today. And she was pushed to the limit by Eric Zipper, who it, it just sometimes the luck doesn't go your way. But wow, did he put up a fight. Completely. He is such an impressive competitor. Every time I watch him, I love watching what he does. I love watching the attitude he has, which is always a classy one. And sometimes it doesn't happen in your favor, but no one can count Eric Zipper out. I can't wait to see his next match. No, and it's almost like the, the tough challenge that went against him, it's almost like that, in a way, helped galvanize his competitiveness because after yeah. that, he started going on a run and getting more serious about the questions, about the answers, and he had a tough round number two. But again, that Eves Bayou pool yeah, in yeah, round yeah, number yeah, three yeah, number was a great one, just came up a little short. And now for an interview with both Z-Man and yeah, his I'm manager of Team two, Swag, two, Winston Marshall. Jen, any, yeah. we turn it back over to you. Oh no, Winston's this taking notes. <laughs> oh, oh, Zipper, stop! Listen, this is this was one of those matches. This was one of those matches that look. When I saw it on the schedule, I went, oh, "Damn, one of them has to lose." Like, I love both of you competitors so much because you both are everything that the Schmodown is about. And again, neither of your records are good indicators of how well you two play. And it's like. Someone had to be, be the winner today, and someone unfortunately had to lose. Um, so, tough loss today. Uh, like I said, an amazing five-point pull. Uh, Winston, I'm, I see you taking notes. <laughs> People were wondering. I actually wrote oh. stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll let you. I'll let you have the floor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, let's see. First <laughs> of all, uh, I think this is pretty important to know. Uh, when they did Oliver. Did she say it with enthusiasm? Because there's an exclamation point there. And if she didn't, I don't know if it counted. Going to go ahead and cross that one off. All right, cool. Um, let's see. Uh, people are probably going to question, you spun away from 1990s. Why would you do that? She could give you classics. Well, we had uh, Eric. Why did you do that? We all know at this point. We yeah, all know no, no, at this but, point. But, but the second was, spin is going to be what, a POTUS choice. On, I'll on. tell you what. Because I never get a strength, and I wanted a strength, Jen. I wanted that's it part so of it. bad. It's that's true, that's yeah. part of it. We, we honestly I mean, felt the well, same you, about 1990s. You got a strength. You got a strength of Janine's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. we, we, we felt Why essentially the same about there? the classics as we did about the 1990s, as we did about another wheel slice on there I don't want to go into. So we were like, if we can shoot for the moon and like make it happen and really blow this out, why not? So I stand by the decision. It's totally fine. Again, we had room for mistakes. So there you go. Get rid of that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, honestly, just hasn't been our year. Let's be real. Has not been our year. It happens. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you had to write that down. Look, man, Janine, Janine has been on a tear uh, this particular year. I know it hasn't turned into dubs. It was about time that it did, and I'm proud of her for doing it, honestly. Uh, 
That being said, for her to be the black cinema champion, I saw her shaking in her boots. We don't miss black cinema. You saw Eric hit a five point black cinema question. Say something, swag, mother. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. Uh, because she won, uh, she better win the next one for one of two reasons. Either A, because we really wanted to meet Paul Walter Hauser, so that yeah. kind of hurt my feelings that she decided to take that away from us. Or B, for revenge for Chandru and for yourself, since Mike has also just been a thorn in everybody's side. So just deal yes. with his his old ass, and that'll be great. I wish uh, he gives him hell. Advancing exactly. I mean, he's he's out here been calling Eric all sorts of old racist song of the South names this whole time and Ooh. whatever else. I, I I don't know if people know the history of that particular term. The whole zippity. I'm not going to get into it. Uh, and finally, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I don't need my board I for this. Forgot about that. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry, Eric. Um, nope. I'm sorry because we reunited World's Finest under the swag banner this year, and I couldn't bring you a single victory, and I and I hate that. And, and we were close, yeah. man. The, the, between the sudden death the sudden against death Hannah, the the way you and John played against against Danger Zone, the the way you played against Jader, and then today, this just goes to show how talented you are, and I feel like. This is on me where I didn't do what needed to be done to get you over that hump. So I just want to apologize to you for being so incredible this entire year, man. I really appreciate that. You have nothing to apologize for. That actually does kind of bring me to a, a bit of an announcement that I that I want to no. make. No. Uh, which is, as you mentioned, I didn't get a single win this year. Um, and so I was kind of thinking about my future in the Schmodown and thinking that if I you know, got knocked out of the tournament in the first round. I don't really know what next year's gonna look like. And uh, after, and so I was gonna come out here if I lost and, and retire. But after seeing the way that I played today, hell with that, I am not going anywhere. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. oh yeah, you got me going there. I, I, was, I was all like, wait, if I read the room right and put my glasses back on, oh, what? Okay, I, you completely fooled me, man. Wait, wow. Wow. I almost so, messed up my eye makeup for you, I'm, Zipper. Oh, I'm so no, sorry, Citizen yeah. Alert. Wow. Crazy man out here in these streets <laughs> scaring the sh out of me. All right. I like, really was thinking about it, but it was so close and that was so fun. Like, why would I leave? So, you know what? Nah, oh, hell with it. God. I'm sticking around. Let's do that again next I year. Yeah, Let's run it back. That. Let's run yeah. it back, guys. So wrap this up, because I gotta go report on a naked man with a machete. This is that's way less scary for my heart than what just happened. Right. Now. So sorry. We have a very big machete problem here in Los Angeles. You need to really, yeah, you need to get that under control. Good luck reporting. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, Zip. Uh, Steph, uh, how do I say this without being too specific? Uh, multiple body parts were quenched during Zipper's last statement, and I, I did not know what was happening, but I didn't want to hear that he was retiring, and thank goodness he was having some fun pulling our leg. You even see Janine the Machine in the chat saying, don't scare us like that, Zip. <laughs> no, definitely multiple cheeks were clenched. I am with you on yeah. that. I was like, no, no, he's not. No, he's not. Does Winston even know? But... Thank God, this is why Zip is the best and why Winston is also the best. The The list will live in infamy forever. I hope the list comes back when it's worth it. But Zipper really had us there and I think that would be a major loss to the league if we lost Zipper. So I can, I am glad to know that he will be back. Yeah, but and it's also nice to see somebody who even in a loss can take a lot of positives out of their performance. And certainly that is gonna be the case with Z-Man. Him and Winston have a lot to build on as they start putting an eye towards next season when, again, as of now, Eric Zipper still will be a valued part of the movie trivia showdown community. And so that is how it breaks here today. Janine the Machine with a rousing victory over Eric Z-Man Zipper. It was a W for Janine and now she wins the right to face the winner. Of Paul Walter Hauser taking on Mike Kalinowski. That is going to be a fun match as well. Steph, always great to be joined by you. I do have trivia for you before we get out of here and say goodnight. Are you prepared? Okay. Yes, okay, Mr. Bro. LASIK Eyes. Where are we going to be 2015? And also thanks to eating carrots every day. Where are we going to be? New York, October. I just gave away the answer. I have no idea how to ask trivia questions properly. The answer is New York. Is, okay, which borough in New York are we going to be at in October on Saturday, the 9th? Which borough? Which borough? 
hopefully some sort of comedy venue watching Mark Ellis. Oh, well, see, that's actually Thursday and Friday, but I'm glad you brought that up. See, this is why we work well together. I'm going to be in New York Comedy Club. Christian Harrell's going to pop in. Ken Knapsack, Jen Sturger, a number of luminaries in and out of the Schmodown are going to be performing alongside me in New York Comedy Club. That's in the East Village Thursday and Friday, and then Saturday, the big event in Brooklyn is the name of the borough oh, at the Rootland is, Theater. Coast term, I'm I'm getting the hint. Yeah, there's look, there's five boroughs in New York, That's, but when you're an out of towner like us, it's just New Saturday, York City, and we are so thrilled to be back east in the Big Apple we for have have some of the most raucous Schmodown fans you would ever want to meet. Two Go epic matchups there. You might be able to score yeah, some last second close. tickets before we sell out at the SchmodownLive.com. Then right we have now. the big event in December, downtown Los Angeles. We don't have to hop a flight for that one, Steph. That is going to be at the Glow Theater for the Schmodown Spectacular in early December. Tickets available at the Schmodown Live as well. And last but not least, where am I right now? You guessed it, Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm telling jokes all week at the MGM Grand. You can get tickets at Mark Ellis dot Lost live Vegas. for Steph Sabra. I'm Mark Ellis, Janine, Eric, Winston, Roxy, and our entire Schmodown crew here at Skybound. We thank you for watching. Continue with the tournament. And Steph and I will see you all very soon. Okay. Um, I was, a hell, I mean, this is the very much the quintessential Schmodown match. The backs and forths, you know, Missing the first question, the challenge, then missing another question, then the, uh, the guy missed the first question, goes up, goes up, Perf great round two, opponent's choice, stealing a few of them, comeback on top of a comeback, and then another comeback, and then a five point win, it's a, it's a quintessential Schmodown match, and that is the reason why we love these matches, and uh, yeah, I was half afraid that that Zipper's gonna was gonna re announce his retirement, but thankfully for all of our sakes, that did not happen. Uh, I got only six questions right in this round. I got zero points in round two, four in round one, and managed to get a couple extra points. Uh, literally a couple in uh, round number uh, three. But I, you know, I ain't playing, so I, I don't really care too much. Anyways, thank you all for watching. As you can see, I might have. Started to doze off a little bit right at the end there. Uh, it's not because I, I was bored or anything. It's because uh, there's a reason why I don't do a lot of these reactions anymore. I am a very tired man these days. But uh, hopefully, things are going to change for the best. For the better. Sorry. See? Tired. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys some other time. Goodbye. Hello again, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Because I really enjoyed making it. So, if you like what you've seen here, please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more awesome content like this. So, until next time, guys, I'll see you guys next time.